Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very in-depth broadcast this evening. And of course, trouble plaguing the entire planet uh, once again, especially in light of North Korea's threat that they are saying to take literally. Uh, the North Korea is planning a nuclear test over the Pacific Ocean. Let's get right into the broadcast here. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about Germany's new elected uh, a chancellor of Germany who has met with Russia and the prospects for peace between Russia and Europe could grow. But is North Korea actually a diversion? Is it going to be something that they intentionally launch in order to keep peace from ever coming towards Russia in the first place? Uh, also looking at possibly a yet another biblical prophecy being on the verge of being fulfilled with China's trade route uh, going towards the West. Uh, the Eastern trade routes once again being set up. Uh, they, of course, they did it to London. Now talks between Syria. Uh, so we're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 16, the prophecy there, the, the, the way made ready for the kings of the East to come on forward there. Let's get right into the news, though, starting here with Sputnik. North Korea diplomat says to take nuclear bomb test threat literally. That is, as Kim Jong-un prepares for that nuclear bomb test. And, of course, they're showing this, uh, this launch pad there inside of the country being prepared on uh, Sputnik News' website. But I have wondered if Pyongyang isn't planning on doing that nuclear test from a submarine itself. Uh, and it's not just that that concerns me, but it's the target itself. RT News reported today U.S. sends two more aircraft carriers to the Pacific ahead of Trump's East Asia trip there. Two more aircraft carriers in the sea there. Well, what does that do? That gives Kim Jong-un a target, especially if he's going to uh, detonate a nuke over the Pacific Ocean. And there are some are saying that President Trump will no doubt call for an immediate strike on North Korea before Kim Jong-un can actually uh, launch this next strike, especially uh, along the lines that Kim Jong-un's own uh, members of his government are saying to take the test seriously or literally in this case here. Business Insider reporting here, a senior North Korean official reportedly repeated the country's threat to conduct the strongest hydrogen bomb test over the Pacific Ocean. Official likely meant launching a nuclear missile and having it detonate over the ocean, which could kill many and would likely pollute the environment for generations. Then we can jump over to Reuters here. Uh, yeah, if Reuters happens to pop up for us here. But anyway, Reuters also weighing in on this issue, saying that it would be an atmosphere, atmospheric nuclear test threat, literally, according to what Reuters is stating on the issue there. Certainly uh, uh, an, uh, an EMP attack, the dreaded EMP attack that the U.S. does fear the most, it's not so much about a nuclear weapon actually reaching the United States, but an EMP attack that could literally set our country back into the Stone Age itself because of all the electronics being totally uh, taken out as a, as a result, or at least in part on the Western coast because of such an attack there. Now, that would then make the U.S. more vulnerable to outside forces invading the country. Whether or not anyone is actually ready to do that or not is still yet another question. But as far as Kim Jong-un trying to make his point that he is uh, not just going to be bullied around by President Trump, well, I think he's trying to make his point very clear. But at the same time, President Trump not playing games, not mincing words either, uh, that he is definitely going to go at it. As it's uh, brought out here on MSNBC, their own title on their page here, U.S. diplomat current U.S. message to North Korea is surrender without a fight or surrender with a fight. One way or the other. The United States definitely appears to be ready to launch that preemptive strike. And it's exactly in accordance to the prophecy in the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall have frightened him. That tidings could be from China and North Korea combined together and, of course, Russia. Uh, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. That's the king of the north. And that is not Donald Trump. I don't believe that's President Trump, not one single bit. But I do believe that we are looking at this biblical prophecy being fulfilled, not because of President Trump, but because whoever is pulling the strings for the deep state U.S. military could be Rome itself right there inside of Europe pulling those strings. And when I say that, there's some things I think that are beginning to unsettle Rome, especially if you remember uh, the, the very 
Pope of Rome himself condemned the relationship that uh, Donald Trump was trying to have with President Putin. And now what do we have here? We have the new Vice Chancellor of Germany, Mr. Uh, uh, Stein, uh, excuse me, Walter Steinmeier, who is met today with President Putin after being elected. Not only that, the trading between Russia and Germany is now back on the rise. Sanctions or no sanctions, Steinmeier wasting no time to get trade relations working together with President Putin. Now, I say that there's something going on even with that issue there. Rome is not going to sit back and allow that to happen. And maybe this is why we're beginning to see sudden surges with migrant issues all over again. When I say migrant issues, what I'm talking about is like in the article here on express.co.uk, this is where uh, the migrants in Spain, or excuse me, let me just look real quick because I have two different ones that I was looking at here. I'm sorry, this is a different one here. French police incapable of stopping the Calais migrants making bid for Britain. In a shocking report where they share there, talking about they have no way to stop these migrants from once again mounting up another, and they believe they're going to make another jungle there near Calais. We've been there many times, shared that information with you. Very serious situation going on over there. And of course, as well, in Spain, uh, this was the, the article that we were actually speaking about there, and I'll just, well, we can't actually blow that one up there, but this is the, the situation going on there inside of Spain there where they had hundreds of uh, uh, migrants that uh, came came over from uh, northern Africa there trying to get into Spain they have stormed the gates there and uh, and it is becoming a major problem for the Spanish government to deal with uh, is this something that they're just beginning to do this in order to create havoc in Europe to where Germany has no chance to do any kind of relationships with Germany whatsoever. I can't really say for sure, but it has become a major problem inside of Spain, also in Italy, and as well as uh, France uh, dealing with the, the, the migrant crisis that is increasing, especially coming out of Northern Africa, out of the different war-torn regions there, coming from Morocco, etc. All right, then we go into other issues as well. This isn't just the only issues that we're looking at. But we also have another thing that is happening. China process, uh, proposing a high-speed rail line connecting western China to Iran. And we know they already did the one uh, connecting uh, China all the way to London, and the first train has already gone there. But we're talking about a high-speed train in this case here. And then here was the kicker for me. This one here is an article here on the People's China's uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China. Wang Yi meets with Deputy Prime Minister, Foreign Minister Walid uh, Mualim of Syria. And they also, uh, believe it or not, are talking about making a railway system from China to Syria. Now, if that doesn't make you begin to wonder, what about the scripture here in the book of Revelation chapter 16? The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Friends, what in the world are we looking at? And I'm in prayer about this particular issue right here over Revelation um, chapter 16, verse 12. There's a lot of other ones up above this that speaks about the different deaths and everything, the plagues that are being poured out. And I can't really say that, that I know it. I don't have a, a firm revelation on this. I do know, as I looked at this and saw it myself, I looked online to see if others were looking at this. Yes, there are others. No one had seen, though, as far as that I'm aware of, this latest article coming out off of Chinese, uh, off of the Chinese uh, own website there, China's own website, about the new agreement with the Syrians. Uh, that had not been brought out. This was, uh, uh, or at least I've not seen anybody speaking about this in relation to the biblical prophecy of Revelation 16. But others have noted, though, when, it, when China was making the new trade route from, from ancient days all the way to London, England, they were speaking about the Revelation 16 prophecy. So there are people already recognizing that, but to actually see this one here on September the 23rd, where Syria has actually met with China, and of course, part of those talks there in the article here is about building, as you can see, the Belt Railroad right here on there. 
See, China's active participation in Syria's post-war reconstruction process. Syria treasures its traditional friendship with China and welcomes and supports the Belt and Road Initiative and is willing to activate, participate in joint construction so as to pursue more practical results from bilateral cooperation. So not just a railway, but, but, but a road and, oh my gosh, this is, this is unreal. We are sitting here on the verge of some of the most fascinating biblical prophecies being fulfilled in our day uh, as we speak now. Uh, friends, do uh, keep us in prayer here. A lot of things that are going on that we're, that we're dealing with, but we ask for your prayer. And also we ask your, your kindness in supporting the work that we are doing here and trying to keep this broadcast of prophetic insights coming to you here on Israeli News Live. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. We'll put it in the description below. And if you don't want to go there, just check out our YouTube channel right there below the picture on the screen. There's a subscribe button. And just above that subscribe button, if you're watching Israeli News Live on YouTube, there's a little donation link there where you can click on that and you can help support the work we do here. God bless you. Thank you. And we'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.